Hi, this is Ann Crow from Precision Physical Therapy, and today we are going to do a virtual running gait analysis. Uh, we'll be looking at the second runner who submitted her videos. We'll call her runner number two. And so runner two, as she comes into the frame here, we're looking at the side view. And we're gonna start with the foot, look at the knee, move up to the hip. And what we notice is that that foot lands pretty far in front of her. And so the angle of the foot uh, with the ground is a bit bigger than we'd like to see for injury risk. Um, additionally, the foot is landing with a non-vertical tibia, so it's landing pretty far in front of the body. Those are two things that tend to be correlated with uh, higher risk for injury, only because when the foot lands further in front of you um, with the heel at a bigger angle, at the ankle at a bigger angle, um, you have to manage more braking impulses and it affects um, how the forces are imparted on different joints in the body. Um, most significantly for this is probably uh, the patellofemoral joint, um, the knee. For her, we see that um, as she's coming through, her knee um, is pretty well over her foot, so it's not traveling too far forward and she has a great amount of knee flexion. So as her foot contacts the ground, her knee is bent, and, that, and by that I mean, even though that foot is contacting in front of her body, she still has a nice amount of knee bend as she contacts the ground, and then as she continues, she gains more knee flexion, so she's bending in her knee joint, as she continues, she has good control with her quad of what's happening at her knee and managing her forces as she's loading the leg. She also has excellent hip extension range here on the left side. So if we notice on the left side, um, she has a little bit of an anterior pelvic tilt. So her pelvis tilts forward a little bit, but it's not a lot and she's keeping her spine pretty well in neutral here. So she keeps her spine pretty well in neutral, even though she has um, a little bit of a longer stride. So she's got good hip extension range on that left side um, as she's running, as well as a really nice forward leaned running posture. So she's got a nice forward body position. Additionally, she's got good hip flexion range in her swing phase. She bends her hip very well and she bends her knee uh, very well in her swing phase. So we notice that for her, um, she's getting to horizontal and maybe a little bit past horizontal um, as she comes through on her swing. And so she's getting good hip and knee flexion in swing phase. It's very hard to tell when you're not using a treadmill because it's harder to gauge what the distance of vertical motion is when you're running. We don't have a reference point to gauge that with. But in this view, if we look at the grass behind her, so I'm looking at this line here. When we see her running through the frame, her pelvis, and then the line changes, so just focus on the line of the grass. Her pelvis is staying really close to that line. So she is not moving up and down too much. She has a nice, um, normal vertical displacement amount of her center of mass. Normal is two to three inches. Now, this is not a exact measurement, <laughs> um, taking the videos this way, but I think uh, with somebody who has such a long stride, it, it is nice to see that she doesn't have too much vertical motion. So here, uh, very similar. We don't see a lot of change of direction of her foot before it contacts the ground. So it still looks like her foot is traveling forward as she contacts the ground, um, which increases the braking impulse. So what we'd like to see is, and what I'm, the area I'm looking at is you know, in this area. Um, and so we'd like to see that the foot change directions a little bit more before she contacts the ground. So changes directions in the air and prepares for this landing. And that's not happening here. Um, and then again, we see non-vertical tibia and increased dorsiflexion angle. And so we see increased angle um, between the foot and the ground. Those are two things 
three things um, that, that would increase uh, risk for injuries. And then she moves into great amount of knee flexion. She's got good strength to be able to control that heel strike in front of her. So um, this may never be a, a, she may never have a problem from this if she maintains such good strength and ability to control the forces. So um, she's absorbing so well in her quad um, that this may or may not be a problem for her in the future. She might just be able to manage this pattern. And as she extends the right hip, we see just a little bit different than extending the left hip. So here we see more of her left shoulder. We see more rotation in her spine and we see slightly more of a pelvic tilt um, in her right hip extension. So we do know that she's getting a difference in her amount of trunk rotation. Um, when she's extending the right leg and flexing the left, then she's getting on the other side. The other side looks very normal. All right, and so next we're gonna look at uh, back view. Wait for her to get right in front of the camera. And here we see something different on the right than we see on the left. So on this, on this left side, we notice that her hip is dropping down so we notice that her hip is dropping down this way. We notice that her trunk is leaning to the side this way. Let's get rid of that arrow. Her trunk is leaning to the side this way. And we see a little bit of increased pronation at the ankle. Not a lot on that step. Additionally, on that left side, on the left stance view, we see a little bit wider elbow than we saw in her arm swing, than we saw um, on the other side. And we notice that the right tibia is rotating. So what, what causes that tibia lateral rotation? Well, it could be asymmetry in the medial versus lateral hamstring but it may also be a pull from her IT band. So the TFL IT band pulls on the tibia this type of direction if it's having to work a little too much and it creates this type of rotation of the tibia. So, and that's what we see here when her right leg is extending. During right stance, we don't see those patterns at the trunk. So her trunk is straight up and down. Her pelvis is dropping slightly, but I don't know that it's significant based on where her foot strike is. And we see a little bit more pronation, um, which, you know, her calcaneus angled inward a little bit and her foot angled outward. So we see a little more of the calcaneus angled in and the foot angled out than we saw on the other side. So what do these things mean? Well, on both sides, this could indicate glute med weakness and lateral stability challenges. So when we look at left stance, we notice this hip dropping pattern. And this has to do with the glute med muscle um, that's in this area. And it provides a force down of the pelvis. So it creates a force this direction. Uh, that helps to level the pelvis out and prevent it from being in that pattern. She is currently leaning her center of mass to the side and widening her arm swing in order for her to move more of her center of mass over the hip. When she does that, it decreases the work required of the glute med. We also see that on that side, She's getting a whole lot more trunk rotation. So we see trunk rotation this direction. So here we see that kind of rotation and her left shoulder is further back, comes further back than her right shoulder does. So let's watch that from the beginning again. So here the hip drop and trunk lean. And here a very slight hip drop 
no trunk lean, no wide arm swing, and there a lot of rotation in the thoracic spine. So that arm is arm and shoulder coming back towards the camera, towards us. Um, at the same time that she's getting this tibial lateral rotation that we talked about, so we see the shoulder moving back towards us at the same time as we see the tibia laterally rotating. On the on her right side view, the hip wasn't extending quite as well as it was on the left. And so we wonder, does this pattern have to do with um, oblique or abdominal muscular control of rotation? Does this have to do with stiffness and uh, hip flexor? Um, and as trying to compensate for that, um, allowing rotation and just the having a wider arm swing carrying her further into thoracic rotation. So there could be a number of things and if this was associated with pain or injury in the thoracic spine or at the, you know, at the knee, um, then, then we would of course piece it out in the clinic and figure out is this an important thing to work on for her or not. The other thing that's worth mentioning here is because her heel strikes further out in front of her body, she's gonna to have to manage more forces at the foot and the ankle. And because she has a heel strike, she needs to have a cushioned shoe. It's very important, and she does. She has a cushioned shoe on. I'm not sure what kind of shoe this is, but it appears to have a quite a bit of cushion. And what that does is it increases the distance um, between the ground. Let's see if I can get a heel strike that's closer to the camera. There we go. So it increases the distance between the ground and the axis of motion at the ankle. So we're talking about this distance here. Think of that like a moment arm and that creates greater force because she's moving into pronation here. So that creates a greater force into pronation at the ankle. So if she were to because she strikes so far in front of the body, she definitely needs a cushion shoe, but that added cushion increases the forces of pronation she has to control at the ankle. That puts stress on the inside of the calf and also puts stress on the Achilles, which can be rotated a little bit, as well as the plantar fascia um, of the foot and the, and the tibia, the bone. So she definitely wouldn't, I wouldn't suggest that she change the shoe um, because of the foot strike pattern, but it's just important to know that the forces at the ankle that force the ankle that direction are gonna be increased based on the thickness of the cushion in addition to um, the heel striking pattern out in front of her. It may never be a problem and she may never have an issue because of this. Um, you know, not all patterns lead to problems. Um, but if, if she did have a pain in any of those areas, then, you know, we, we might consider working on, on a foot strike correction. And last, we're going to look at her front view. And really, we're just looking to see is there anything different that we didn't catch in the other views. And so here, we do see as she comes, as she brings her right leg through, um, her hip is adducted so and her tibia is rotated so this appears that she's using her TFL um, for more hip flexion uh, on this right side than maybe some of the other hip flexors which would correlate to what we saw on the back view where she had more tibial lateral rotation and it would correlate to what we saw on the side view where she had a little more anterior pelvic tilt and a little bit more trunk rotation with the right side. And so, um, and that we're just, I'm just talking about how she brings her leg through um, in, in that angle. And that angle uh, can also include a little bit of rotation of the femur. Whereas this side, she brings the leg straight through. So when you see the left side, she comes straight through. And on the right side, um, she draws it in, in a slightly rotated posture. And so you can kind of see here that she's in a little bit of rotation um, that direction. Um, it doesn't appear to me that she's significantly crossing over. So I think that, uh, so crossover, what are we talking about there? Well, if we draw a line down the center of the body, do her feet cross that line? Are they crossing over? 
and it does not appear to me um, that she's crossing. It looks like she has a narrow base, but I think she's she's probably running pretty quick here. And so um, that step crossed over, but mo the last two towards the camera crossed a little bit, but the others did not. And she's getting ready to change direction as she gets as she gets closer to the camera here. Um, I think that's everything I wanted to look at for this athlete. Um, thank you so much, Runner2, for submitting uh, your videos. I'm very uh, pleased to have the opportunity to analyze them, and I hope if there's anything I can help you with in the future, you let me know. Thanks for tuning in.